Now suppose we have a chemical reaction that has achieved equilibrium. And I want to ask the question, how does our chemical equilibrium change when we change the following things? When we increase or decrease temperature, when we increase or decrease pressure, or when we change the concentrations of reactants or products. Now these questions and many others can be answered using a principle known as Le Chatelier's principle. And what this principle states is that whenever a system at equilibrium is stressed, it will respond by shifting equilibrium in the direction that tends to decrease that stress. Now let's look at three stresses, temperature, pressure, and concentrations. So let's begin with temperature. Suppose we have the following reaction in which one mole of N in the gas state reacts with three moles of diatomic H2 plus in the gas state to produce two moles of ammonia also in the gas state and heat. So this is an exothermic reaction. Now whenever we're talking about Le Chatelier's principle and we see that we have heat produced or heat in the beginning, that means we can treat this heat guy as a product. So our heat is tangible, okay? Let's, so now let's increase the temperature of our system, of our reaction. Now we increase temperature by adding energy, and that means we're adding heat. Now if we're adding heat, that means one of our products, namely the heat guy, is increased. So the concentration, it's not really a concentration, but you could think of it as a concentration of our heat increases. Now, if you think of this as the reaction quotient, that means our ratio will increase. So our Q will become greater than our K. And that means if K is bigger than Q, there will be a leftward shift of equilibrium. In other words, these guys will tend to react to convert back to our reactants, namely these two guys. So we see that whenever we're talking about an exothermic reaction in which heat is produced, increasing temperature of our system will shift equilibrium to the left this way. So in this case, the reverse reaction is more favored than the forward reaction. So let's reverse the case. Let's say we're dealing with an endothermic reaction in which heat is added to our ammonia molecules to create our products. So now these guys are products and these guys are reactants. Now what happens if we increase temperature? Well now we have the reverse case. Now one of our reactants, its concentration increases and that means our Q, our quotient, reaction quotient, decreases, becomes smaller than K. And that means increasing temperature of an endothermic reaction will shift it to the right. We're going to see a leftward shift in equilibrium. So the reactants will tend to react to produce our products, our N in the gas state and three moles of H2 in the gas state. Now some exceptions to Le Chatelier's principle exists. Now at very high temperatures, entropy takes over. And that's because entropy is dictated by the following reaction, in which change in Gibbs free energy is equal to change in enthalpy minus temperature times change in entropy. So if temperature is high enough and we have a positive change in entropy, even if we have an endothermic or an exothermic reaction, doesn't matter which reaction we have, at a very high temperature with very positive uh, entropy, we're always going to get a negative Gibbs free energy. And so our reaction will always tend to be this way, in a rightward direction. Now let's talk about pressure. Suppose once again we have the following exothermic reaction. And now suppose we try to increase our pressure at constant temperature. So we decrease our volume. And so the pressure of our system, the pressure of the molecules exert on the walls of the container increases. So what will happen? Well, increasing, or according to Le Chatelier's principle, increasing pressure by decreasing volume at constant temperature, by making our system smaller, by shrinking it, will shift the equilibrium in the direction where there are less molecules present. In other words, Let's see how many molecules we have on the reactant side and how many molecules we have on the product side. 
Well, according to this formula, we have one and three, so four molecules, four moles of molecules on that reactant side, and only two moles of molecules on that product side. So that means by decreasing volume, thereby increasing pressure, our system will shift this way, rightward. Because if our system goes this way, it's going to produce, on average, less moles of molecules than on this side. So our system will try to counter the increase in pressure by decreasing the pressure by going this way to decrease the number of total molecules found in our system. If we have less molecules in our system, that means less molecules are colliding with the walls of our container and so our overall total pressure is less. And finally, let's look at how concentration affects our equilibrium of our reaction according to Lechatelier's principle. Now let's look at the same reaction. One mole of N reacts with three moles of H2 in a gas state to produce two moles of ammonia and heat, an exothermic reaction. So how will increasing reactants change our equilibrium? Well, increasing the concentration of either or both of the reactants shifts equilibrium to the right, so a rightward shift in equilibrium. While increasing concentration of our products, any of the products or both of the products, shifts our equilibrium to the left. So increasing this guy will shift our equilibrium to the left, producing more of our reactants. So why is that? Well, let's see once again what happens when we increase the concentrations of this guy and this guy. Well, recall what the reaction quotient states. If you increase the concentration of our reactants, then our reaction quotient will become larger than our equilibrium constant K. And if Q is larger than K, that means we're going to observe a rightward shift in equilibrium. In other words, the forward reaction will proceed this way at a higher rate than the reverse reaction. So these guys will want to convert to decrease the overall concentration of our reactants so that our Q can become our K again. In other words, Q will tend to move towards K. <coughs> towards K. Likewise, if we increase the concentration of products, that means our Q will become a less than K, and since, K will want, and since Q will want to move towards K, this concentration will tend to decreasing, there were, therefore providing a leftward shift in equilibrium. I want to mention one last important note. What will happen if we add some other arbitrary molecule that is not present in our reaction, such as, for example, diatomic Cl2 in our gas state? Well, to answer this question, let's look at our partial pressure equilibrium constant. And the reason we're using partial pressures is because every single reactant is in the gas state. Let me just add the G and G for gas. So our equal or partial pressure equilibrium constant is given by Kp equals the partial pressure of our product to the second power because we have a two coefficient divided by the partial pressure due to this gas molecule times the partial pressure due to this gas molecule to the third power. The third comes from the coefficient and the one here comes from the one coefficient. Notice that our gas molecule, this one, does not appear in our equilibrium expression. And that means adding this guy will have no effect on our chemical equilibrium. And in fact, adding any other molecule, for example, helium, to our mixture will not do anything to our chemical equi <coughs> equilibrium. And that's an important point to understand. Only increasing the concentrations of molecules that are actually present in our reaction and our equilibrium expression will affect our chemical equilibrium. And because this molecule isn't present, it will have no effect on our chemical equilibrium.